The United Nations climate talks have begun in Durban, South Africa, bringing almost 200 countries together in an effort to tackle the climate crisis. Inside the convention center, negotiations are focused on the future of the world's only international climate law, the Kyoto Protocol. Outside, rural women from across Africa are calling for urgent action. What would you say to people living in rich countries like the United States and the United Kingdom who don't believe in climate change? I know they don't believe in it, but they have to come to Africa to experience the word climate change. And after, especially the ones that are in decision-making positions, they have to come here and live with us in the rural areas to go back to the people and to tell them, to, to, to make that the people aware that there is something like climate change, especially in Africa. What's your experience of climate change? Are you experiencing it now? Yes, there's a, 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 a great change now. Because now, if you see now, there's no rain, there are floods and everything is just messed up. In this 17th round of the climate talks, activists want to see more ambition. We need the United States, we need Canada, we need the European Union, Japan, all the Annex I countries uh, to put their differences aside and, and sign on to the second commitment of the Kyoto Protocol. And that uh, we need to really s look at our addiction to energy in the belly of the beast of development, of industrialization, of economic globalization. The other thing that we think they really need to get real about is actually the urgency of the ambition and the science. The current pledges that are on the table, even if implemented in full, leave us miles away from a safe climate trajectory. It's not just NGOs saying that, some of the world's leading in the, you know, authoritative institutions such as the United Nations Environment Programme, the International Energy Agency, who are not renowned for being tree huggers, are saying that we need to see global emissions peaking really at the middle of this decade at the latest, otherwise we are heading in for a very, very dangerous future. So that need, there needs to be a clear steer for ministers to get real on ambition and agree a process to ratchet up the targets now.